way too mother flipping and competitive. Thank you for tuning in. This is going to be a two part episode. Part one today is prime. Part two is going to be paint. By the end of today's episode, you will see the car in a completely different color. But as of right now, I have no idea what color that is going to be. There's also a bit of a surprise I'm walking into. Lewis did some magician work in order to mold the fenders and I absolutely love it. Look at this. So I don't know if you guys can see it very well on the camera. Part of why we're priming today is to make everything one color so we can really smooth out the body lines and finish trimming. Cause right now it kind of like, it takes away with a bunch of different colors to really see the lines. So the front fenders were a little bit bubbly. Lewis flattened the top and flattened the sides. So it looks a little more, I want to say aggressive. And he also accentuated this body line here. I love it. I absolutely love it. I it kind of gives it a little more width. Look at that body line. It just, it made such a difference on the kit and it matches the rear. And don't get me wrong, this kit is absolutely amazing. I loved it before, but I really just like the aggressive body line and I think the front fender may have just been missing that body line a little bit. Super custom, super cool. What, you think I'm just gonna throw it because you put the ball there? <laughs> Also, I have received an unbelievable amount of support from you guys. Thank you so much. Literally so many of you have been reaching out to me, offering parts for Sunfire and anything that I need. I can't thank you enough. Speaking of, Rob from New York sent me a version six STI wing. I'm speechless. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I'm gonna go ahead and unbox her right now. Let's see how she fits. This is perfect. This is. Thank you so much, Rob. We also have a hood that's on the way to the 2.5 rest hood. You guys will see soon. You guys will see soon. Oh, I fucking love this. This is like a We the People build. Oh, we're taking this. That's right. We're gonna make some noise. Look at that side exit. Let's hear it. to agree on the color. All right. So you got one for red, for yellow, and for orange? Red, yellow, and orange. So the proper way to look at paint chips, you look at them straight on. Yep. That's a straight on color. You turn them to the side, that is called the flop. And then you bend it and it'll show you the highlight and the low light. That's how you look at paint chips. Here's what we laid out. We've done looked at countless different little books. Yeah, you got like <laughs> <laughs> out of these four, I was really hoping to find something that would pop in the sun and also give a good effect of the like when I bend it, it almost looks like a different color to really accentuate the body lines. And I think this is the one we're going to go with. So if you see when I do this, like it'll really, really, really accentuate the body lines when it's flat versus when it's on its side, just depending on the angle. Kind of digging this. And it is a Chrysler color, copper mango. This is it? I think that's it. I think so too. I don't know if I want white wheels anymore though. I don't think white wheels will work with that. Yeah. Gloss black. No. Brown wheels? <laughs> <laughs> what is with me in this obsession with brown? with brown? You don't want to sell poop turd is what it really comes <laughs> down to. <laughs> All right, let's do this. 
It's funny, so I've always been told that I have very expensive taste, even if I don't know the cost of something, but hot damn, I must have picked the most expensive paint. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So for a Chrysler paint code, it is almost the same cost as a McLaren paint. That it is. You picked uh, a decode paint, <laughs> which is uh, about $200, $220 a quart. First thing is first, I gotta peel off the rest of this Plasti Dip. All right. So this day didn't exactly go to plan. I have literally spent the past three hours trying to get Plasti Dip off of this wing. It kind of sucks. But I do look forward to seeing the final progress. We did get Sunfire out of the shop and over into the paint booth. We are just about ready to do primer. Let's take a look at her. So here we have Sunfire over here. We're pretty much ready to prime, at least the first coat. So I unfortunately have to leave. I was invited by Mercedes to a red carpet Oscars viewing party. So it's kind of an important thing for me to be there. So unfortunately I have to leave. I have other obligations. I'm not going to be able to prime her, but tomorrow I will be back in order to paint her. I am low key kind of glad that we are doing this to a salvaged chassis because I would feel so bad cutting the fenders on a clean titled GC8. So I'm glad it actually worked out. Also as an update, I completely forgot to let you guys know that we ended up checking this with a frame shop and we tracked it straight. The car tracks straight, everything is okay. So chassis is good. The only real damage was in the front and it's been fixed. And we also had it additionally fixed a little bit more. So she is perfect. I am so bummed that I can't stay because I really do enjoy painting, but I will be here in order to paint the grand finale, the actual color that we will be painting Sunfire. If you guys have never removed Plastida before, you have to experience it just once in your life. Go to the AutoZone, buy some Plastida, spray something and just have fun. Put it on thin. Yeah. yeah. Get the full, <laughs> get the full experience. Put right. it on real thin and let it sit in the sun. Many unbearable hours later. paint day. I just picked up the paint and I last minute changed the color. So it's not the Chrysler color you guys saw yesterday. I decided against the copper mango color and I went with something completely new. You guys will see soon. Yeah, the gang strong. This is what you know we're here at Hermes Performance. All right, you guys, we're about to see the Subaru for the first time in about a week and a half and so much has been done. We got a hood, we got some new wheels. Luz has primed it. He's kind of finished molding the body. He's masked it. I'm not taking credit for any work. This is his masterpiece and Luz has done such an incredible job on it. I'm excited to see it. I'm excited to paint a car for my first time. And I'm also super grateful that I didn't have to do any of the masking this time. What's up? How's it going? All right, how are you doing? Good. You finished removing the plastic dip on this. I'm scared to touch it. I don't yeah. want to get oil on it. Yeah, I just raised my rates for <laughs> removing plastic. That was a nightmare and a half. Again, you guys, if you've never done it, experience it once in your life. And this is the hood. After the last super video, when we were cutting the fenders, I expressed that there were still a couple parts that I needed. And Riley from Upstate Subaru, thank you so much for reaching out and contacting me that you had this. I cannot wait to see this whole car put together. We also have the rear deck lid and the fenders. I'll let Luz talk about what was done while I've been gone. He did a lot of rust prevention. There were some comments in the last video about how cutting the fender and, and epoxying the new fender onto the old one was bad because of rust. I didn't show all the steps in that video. Part of it was we're gonna remove the fender like what we did now, and then we're going to treat it on the back side underneath. So I'll grab Lewis in a second and I'll let him walk through what he did for that. These are the wheels that you're used to seeing on Sunfire. The NK TS6s, love them. Used to run them on NV. They're five by 114, so I temporarily put them on Sunfire. They were not the wheels we were going to permanently run because they weren't wide enough. Their staggered set and the offset wasn't what we wanted. Let me show you the new NK wheels that we are going to be running on the GC8. Let me present to you the NK NT03Ms. <gasps> oh, my goodness, they need to be clean. They're a little dirty right now, but my goodness, these arrived and Lewis slapped on some necks and tires on them for me so that we could make sure while I was away that the fitment was right and the fitment is certainly right. <laughs> 
I don't know if we're actually going to keep them silver or if I'm going to paint them. Uh, once you guys see the color of the car, you can let me know your thoughts. But I was kind of thinking of painting them white. So these are an 18 by 10 and a half with a plus 30 offset. Fitment is like right on the fender. I literally run NKs on all my cars, except the Prius, yet. So obviously since you've last seen her, she's been primered and she's been masked. This engine bay does look so clean though. I can't wait to see everything just all one color. I haven't told them yet the color we decided on. Like I was kind of stoked on that copper mango and then I Googled it and saw it on like other cars and I was like, you know, maybe this is the wrong direction. <laughs> I'll at least say that the color we're doing is a Porsche color. And the funny thing is the color we did on the cage on the S14 was a Porsche color. That was a 918 Spider color. Right. This one. Well, you guys will have to wait to see. <laughs> I love it. When this car first came in, I was like, hey, you should do like the total creamsicle kind of. My, mind you, I came in with the mindset of doing like a burnt orange. But I was like, no, a solid with white wheels would be amazing. <laughs> All right? No, And that, no, this no, is part no. of why we were talking about a Nardo gray, because I love that color and that's a solid color. We got way away. We even sat down there for like an hour and a half we looking did. at paint chips and all that. And at the end of the day, it is a creamsicle. Is that a creamsicle? It's a creamsicle. There's a when little more red to it. It's a creamsicle. There's no more arguing about it. That's a creamsicle once, uh, once those wheels go white. All right, we're gonna finish masking this door real quick. We have a couple things to mask, not gonna film it, and then we'll start painting. Okay, so we're about a couple hours in. We have all the fenders, everything laid out that we're gonna spray. We've masked up this door, got everything kind of finished. Also took some acetone, cleaned up the engine bay, cleaned up a little more oil. Finished masking a few other items. We're gonna take out the bumper support because we're not pinning that. And we're gonna start spraying some sealer. Hey, Lewis. Yes. Can we please put a beer in your paint shaker? We are not putting a beer. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, I wanna see it explode. No, no. Been there, done that. <laughs> We have the sealant now officially on every bumper, crevice, and car. But I think the most challenging part of painting this whole thing was this engine bag. Also, this body kit looks like it is part of the car. This does not look like a wide body kit. This looks like an OEM fender. You did such an incredible job blending that. Oh my God. Oh, do you want to talk about what you did for the rust prevention? I cut out all the extra metal because it didn't need to be in there. Yeah, keep in mind guys, when we put the fenders on, this is how the kit is supposed to be installed. You can see that we only cut a little bit to put this fender on and then we took it off, well, Lewis took it off and then trimmed it. So it was essentially one fender. Those comments about the structural integrity, um, what? <laughs> it's a fender, what's structural about a fender? <laughs> They're meant to like come off. Pretty much uh, trimmed it all back to where the glue is and then painted underneath and the edge is painted. So there will be no rust yeah. issue. So I appreciate you guys' concern, but there's nothing to worry about. This is why I work with professionals. <laughs> Let me show you guys the paint. Oh my God. It doesn't look the same on camera as it does in person. Look at that. It looks a different shade, doesn't it? It does. So for you guys who are curious exactly what color this is, this is the GT3 RS Lava Orange. We were gonna do the super metallic -y copper mango Chrysler color. Funny enough, Porsche color is actually cheaper. That's not why I did it. I just like this color better and I think this will really compliment Envy. Sunfire. It's not Sunfire no more. So I have a new name for this color. Officer, please pull me over. You guys know how like red is the color that is documented to be pulled over the most by cops? Yeah, I picked red. It's funny. It looks more red in person than it does on camera. On camera, it looks like very orange. In person, it looks like the tomato. Oh my god, 
much different on camera than it does in person. You guys have to come see this car in person sometime. It's like more red than it is orange. I can't wait to see this all put together. It's crazy. You guys always ask, with all the swaps I do, why don't I pay my engine bay more? Will you guys see the amount of work that goes into it? I can't wait to see it in the sun. All right, shall we clear? Let's clear. Let's clear. So here we go, she's clear coated, you guys. We got only new wheels, but new paint. My God. This was a long day. Very. Bro, we just painted my car the color of a construction cone. <laughs> 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 We're building it right. But I, I, I bought this car for $800 and this is like a, what you'd say, like a $10,000 paint job. <laughs> with, the, with the bond body and everything, it's probably about 10 grand. Yeah. I can't wait to see everything assembled. We won't see it on this episode. You guys have to tune into the next episode to see her all put together because we want the paint to dry and we're going to be installing an engine here shortly, boys. We took 20 minutes, we waited for everything to kind of dry a little bit more, and we took off the covers on the wheel, and to show you the wheels, oh my god. Look at that. I'm stoked how this came out. I'm happy. I know it was a track car, and it was like, you know what, hey, we're just gonna beat it up anyway. It doesn't need to be amazing. <laughs> but I'm like, no, it's gotta be like- Perfect. And, yeah, and I'm happy with it. It's not perfect, but you know what? It's 3,000% better than what it was. I would be proud to say that I did this. You did do this. Paint is only as good as the prep work and you literally remolded the fenders in order of it to have a better line. So, so do you forgive me? <laughs> do you forgive me for, <laughs> for the missed deadlines? I say a week and a half, you guys. It's, it's been more than that. <laughs> <laughs> you threw yourself in the bus like, yeah, last time I saw this car was like a week and a half ago. It's been a few weeks, but Rightfully so, there's just that much that needed to be done on this. But do you forgive me? Of course! Alright. You can look at this thing! Bro, this paint job is too nice for this car. So when the first coat went on, we're like, okay, this is... It's pretty. It's a little bright. But then, like, once the matte went on, it was okay. I'm liking this. And then once the clear went on, it was like, oh, hot damn. Game changer! <laughs> this should be hitting different. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly it. That's exactly it. All right, you guys, so I just left the shop. I'm gonna set you up here because, okay, one, I'm absolutely in love with the paint color. I couldn't be happier. And two, if you guys are new to the channel, hi, my name's Amelia. <laughs> I am a huge advocate for mental health awareness. A lot of people suffer from it on a day-to-day -day basis. I firsthand lost my father to suicide. So I try to bring awareness where I can. I woke up a couple days ago really missing my dad. I spent the whole day thinking about how he's gone and not in my life and the memories I'm going to miss instead of thinking about the good times we had. That got me thinking about self-talk and the internal dialogue that you have within yourself. And I truly believe how you talk to yourself is going to bring happiness to your life. Something an acting coach told me a long time ago is the internal dialogue you're having with yourself. Would you say that to a seven-year-old child? If you felt that you made a mistake in your day or something wasn't good enough, would you say, yeah, you fucked up, that wasn't even close? No, you'd say, good job for trying. That's incredible, you'll do better the next one. Don't worry about it. You guys at home, you are awesome. You are here to rule and do good and you are a light in the sky and you make someone's day every time that you say hi to them and you are a force to be reckoned with and know that and you can accomplish anything in your life that you want to and thank you. Thank you for watching and supporting and just know that your life is worth something. He grew up, we out here and we out here with love. I lost my phone and now I'm looking everywhere for it. Is this it? Yeah.